mixed up with some cow manure. You don't know what that's what that's been. You don't know what they did to it. You trust everybody but God. Yeah, you do. Trust everybody but God. Going to people's houses, knocking on the door. You don't know if they're in there tripping on something, some kind of uh, drug. They might think you the devil. Come to the door and shoot you between the eyes. Why am I being so crude today? Because I got to get it to you just where somebody can get it. Maybe you can get it on an intellectual level, but I got to get real and raw with some folks. Because that's the only place they can get it. That's the only way they understand it. You got to understand that if God didn't want you alive, you wouldn't be here today. Only because of what the Lord has already done for you. Here is the prophet now. He said, if I go tell the king about this, the king's going to have me killed. And he said, go anyhow. In the third verse, he said, call Jesse. He said, you shall anoint uh, down at Jesse's house, who I name unto you. And then he went on down. Look at verse 7 with me. He said, the first son will come in. He said, well, uh, is he the one? God told Samuel, said, look, look on the heart. Abinadab came and made him walk by Samuel. But the Lord had not chosen him. Shammah came. He passed by. Jesse's seven sons walked before Samuel to see who is going to get chosen. Now this was Israel's uh, American Idol show. Everybody trying to make it to the big time. I want you to know everybody, as uh, Brother Jordan said in here the other night, he said, chasing a dream. Yeah. Yes, chasing a dream. Yeah. You're going on the TV trying to chase a dream. You're going out in the clubs at night trying to get chosen. I want to get chose. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Yeah, that's why you keep going over and over. And then you're recycling. You've already been all through the club. Now you're going back to the one you started with. And go back through them again. Either that or you have to change clubs. I wish I could have somebody to know what the truth is. Keep going back to the same places, doing the same thing, getting the same results. But look at what he said. He said, seven sons came by. Samuel said to Jesse, are these all your children? In the 11th verse. He said, there remains yet the youngest, and he's a sheep keeper. The lowest job you could have. A sheep keeper. Who wants to be out there with the sheep? Out in the hot, dusty field, bugs flying all around. No water, you got to have your little canteen with you. Then the sheep, they out there. There's no air conditioning. You want to get, move up in life. Uh, you want to be up. Not down there was a sheep keeper. And then something happened. Something happened. Look at what happened. He said, send and fetch him. For I won't sit down until he comes. The 12th verse that he sent. And he brought him in. Now he was rough and ruddy. But he had a beautiful countenance. Good me to look at. The Lord said, Arise, Samuel, anoint him, for this is he. Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the Spirit of the Lord left Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. God can send uh, some of that evil. A spirit upon you to make you worry about all the things that you've done. And that's only because you have to understand, God keeps you alive. God protects you from a whole lot of things because he wants to use you. All you have to do is make yourself available. Have you got on your knees and said, Lord, use me this year? Use me in 2013 in a way that I've never been used before. I want you to use 
used by God more. If you've been used of the Lord before, go to him and say, Lord, use me more this year. Use me more this year than you've used me before. Oh God, I want to be in your care. I want to be in your hand. I want to be in your keeping. I want you to use me, Lord. And I want you to know that God can fix it for you. God has a plan and God has included you in his plan. David didn't know that he was in God's plans. David had no idea. He thought he'd be a sheep keeper. He was the last of the seven sons. He said, I'm the last one. I'm the last one at the table. I'm the last one to get fed. I'm the last one to get all the clothes. All the clothes got passed down. They didn't go to the store and buy stuff. They just had hand-me-downs. Somebody in here ought to know what hand-me-downs are. Especially when you win the youngest one. He was the last one. But God had a plan for him. God said, I want you, sheep keeper, to be in charge of my nation. Hallelujah, I want to use you. Hallelujah. Who knows for such a time as this? Who knows God will pick out somebody that nobody's watching, no. you know God can fix it for you. God has plans for you. Don't you worry about what you're going to end do or do in your life. Your life, your future is in the hands of God. Don't you worry about that. You put yourself and your heart in God's care. And God will open doors for you that no man can close. I wish I had a witness in here. Today I can't leave you there because this boy named David he heard that there was a war they called for a battle all of his brothers went to war all of his brothers had gone, they gathered all of the nation Israel and there was a Philistine nation that had a soldier so big so big, so strong he was bigger than than the Hulk. Yeah. He was bigger than Green Lantern. Yeah. He was bigger than Batman. He was a, a tough soldier. He was a giant thing to life. Yes, Don't you realize he stood there and laughed at God's people, Israel. He said, if you are a man, come over here and fight me. If you're really a man. And 40 days he challenged them, standing on this mountain top, hollering over to the other side, and there was a valley down between. And he called them out. He called them nothing. Men, nothing. The men were afraid. Finally, David showed up, and he said, I'm bringing you food from my father's house. He sent me cheese and bread and, and to give to you. But he said he heard this giant making fun. Yeah. And he said, wait a minute. Let me go. Yeah. They looked at him and said, are you out of your mind? You're, you're not even a grown man. You're not even a grown He said, yeah, but don't look on the outside. Yeah. Look down in my heart. Look back at 
the giant. Then he said, this day, I will take you, throw your carcass to the bank. Yeah. 